we daily saw the importance of laboratory work, whether it was a dashboard showing percent positivity or showing new variants and subvariants that were showing up from COVID. Uh, all of that came from us, our laboratories, our staff. It, it came from our organizations. Uh, I can remember a small group of, of leaders at, at the hospital coming together and first asking ourselves, you know, is, is, is this real? Right, this is something that's, that's going to impact us. And unfortunately, very quickly, the answer to that was a resounding yes. We had daily meetings, I mean, hour by hour at times with COVID preparation. Um, you know, we had a lot of alignment within our system to try to help, you know, put as many resources to this as possible. Initially, when we started, at the very start of the pandemic, we started testing and we were just all, everyone was in, right? We're all just jumping in and doing whatever we can, wherever we can, as for as long as we can. In the laboratory, the big question was, how can you tell us if we're dealing with it? And that was a, a really difficult question to answer because uh, the testing capabilities for COVID at that time ac across the nation just weren't there. It was a novel virus. Nobody had heard of it before. There were no commercially available tests. I'm just supposed to figure this out on my own. And I, like, I don't know if I'm doing this stuff right. I guess I'll just do this. It required us to, uh, to investigate new equipment, uh, new skills, new techniques, um, things that, uh, that some of us hadn't done before, even though we have the background to learn and be able to do it. It wasn't, wasn't our, our core business yet. It's become that. And uh, we found along the way that we had, um, we had people in our lab that had experience and the knowledge, and so we learned how to leverage them. Other labs in our community were asking for uh, ways to validate their new tests, and we're like, oh, we, we simply don't have the time or the energy, and then you have to slow down on your thought and think, you know what, we need them to be our partners. If they can get tests up, they will alleviate our burden. But then the supply chain wasn't able to, to support it. So we had uh, purchase equipment that didn't ship for four or five months before it came to our lab. So whether it be like COVID testing supplies, collection supplies, things like that, even basic tubes, we weren't able to get those early on because of the limitations within the supply chain. So that was the biggest thing that we saw early on. But Getting plastics for a laboratory at this time was really, really difficult. And we relied heavily on Oregon Health Authority for reagents, for plastics and supplies. And so we would, uh, check a van out of the motor pool and somebody would drive all the way up to Hillsboro, come back with a, a van full of supplies. We got through this together. We pulled together as a large laboratory community. Uh, some of it was local, some of it was regional, some of it was statewide. Well, I can tell you that the consortium was invaluable by allowing uh, those of us in the field to come together and to share with each other, we were able to gain insight into the landscape to, to form a strategy that would care for our patients. But we feel uh, connected and not alone. And we share uh, reagents, we share supplies when you know someone use similar products and then have access of something could help the other lab. You know, we are actually very good at sharing the consortium had a huge psychological impact, I think, on everyone in it because we didn't feel alone. We didn't feel like we were struggling. We had somebody to talk to who was in the same position. And it just was one of the best things to come out of the whole experience, knowing that we had this network that we could rely on to communicate with each other. But the idea of having a consortium like this where we're able to kind of learn best practices from other sites I think that's gonna help everybody to be stronger the next pandemic or next issue that we deal with. My experience is gonna be different from theirs. So it's nice to be able to come together and talk about it and nice not to have to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. Great minds think alike. We don't do a good job of actually coalescing and voicing what our needs are as a, as a, as a profession, as a system, as an entity within a hospital. And so it allows us to be able to kind of collaborate to unify our messaging, to go forth in a very unified way in a single focused direction, to try to help advocate for our needs as a profession. The worst tragedy would be all this great collaboration happens during this time and then we all just kind of go our separate ways and reinvent the wheel in some years when it all happens again or, or whatever. Even if it's not a big thing like it is was this time, there'll be something else.